Hi, it's Rob Hadley here at the Technical Hypnotherapy Association and I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about bulimia. Now, first I should just sort of establish ourselves in this a little. Um, when I started looking at working in bulimia, along with my senior therapist Carrie at Vancouver Hypnotherapy, um, we decided to really look very closely at, at the issue of bulimia and try to get an understanding of what people are doing in terms of treatment at the moment. But also we, uh, we decided that it would be very positive for us to actually go out and talk to a lot of people who are bulimic, which is why you actually see some really good interview material on our online um, uh, video footage. But one of the things we did was we did a survey. We surveyed 300 people who suffered from bulimia. And one of the things that came out very clearly in this is that really bulimia is very, very misunderstood. It's an issue which people have a very set idea about it. And often it's completely wrong. So our approach isn't quite the same as a lot of other therapists. Our approach is one which is founded absolutely on performance. We've maintained those things that work and we've let go of those things that don't. So the first part of understanding bulimia is actually to get it 100%. As much as you might think it's about food, as much as you might think it's about fat, forget all that. What's actually happening is bulimia is the expression, the way the person shows a level of anxiety. When you take care of the anxiety, the bulimic activity often comes right down into a balance. It, comes, it becomes something which is not really that much of an issue. So when people say, oh, it's all about people wanting to look thin, it's actually not that simple. Now, that can be an aspect of it. The, for instance, you can have someone who has high anxiety, and as a result, they're thinking, well, what are the other ways that I can make myself attractive to society, one of which might be, well, I should be thinner. In other words, the, the issue of weight, although part of it, it is not actually the underlying issue. What we've found, and the way we've treated it very successfully at Vancouver Hypnotherapies Clinic is to work with it as an anxiety type issue. Okay, so who is the bulimic? Who is the bulimic client? What do they really look like? Well, they can be underweight or overweight. That's the first thing. They don't necessarily have to be thin. The other thing to remember about bulimics is although there's historical ideas about it, they'll generally be wrong, and as a result, they're probably very reluctant to have some sort of treatment. You know, these people step back often. When they come to you, it's because they really desperately do need treatment. It's, it's usually getting much more serious at that point. So these are people who have sometimes been around therapy or been around the world of, of counseling, but you, in many, many instances, it simply hasn't worked. We have uh, several eating disorders clinics run by St. Paul's Hospital here, and, Vancouver Coastal Health, I think there's one at Children's Hospital as well. Most of our clients have been through those. We subsequently bring them to a successful place, but they've been through them and often gone back on a waiting list for another. And it's basically because they don't work, and that's a tragic thing, but it's because they're working with a system which they have put in place with the idea, oh yes, we must get the best possible advice out there. And that best possible advice is often completely wrong. So the first thing is, understand your bulimic client. Now, what we see in this survey is that most of these guys are, guys, I should say, ladies, most of these people are super achievers. So they'll be in the top 20% of the school group. They will know more about nutrition than you do, so don't try and fob them off with something like, well, you should eat more fruit, I get it. The nutritional knowledge that the bulimic client has is something that they become almost obsessive about sometimes. So they, they absolutely know what is good food and what is not. They're usually, as I say, in the top 20% at school. In many instances, certainly above the norm, their parents split up during their teenage years. So they're children of divorce or children of difficult marital situations. Now, not in all cases, but in many cases that's the case. Um, they almost certainly, under the stats which we put together on this 300 group, 
they almost certainly have at least one parent or grandparent who has been in some form of addiction. Now that addiction can take the form of workaholic, but they're, they're an addict at one point or another in their life. That's the grandparents or the parents. And it can be on either side, mother or father. We see issues of cutting um, in about 40% of the bulimic clients. Now that's substantially above the national average, but it's not to say that every bulimic is a cutter. But certainly we see an increased incidence in it. Um, there's a lot of bulimics who are unable to binge and purge outside their own home. Now some will do it at great ease in a restaurant, but there are many who actually can't even do it outside of their own home. So keep in mind there's more than one type of bulimic. We also see some types of bulimic that will binge on typical binge foods such as chips, ice cream and a few um, nuts is often one because nuts is supposedly healthy but it's actually a, a powerful binge food. And then rather than purging they'll exercise themselves at a level that will be unhealthy. Now an hour a day might seem a lot to some people but to a bulimic it, it, it might be nothing. We've had bulimics who will literally run for six hours a day now later they turn up in hospital with stress fractures in their femur. It's a, it's a terrible situation. But very extreme cases of excessive exercise. Certainly we've seen that. But in that instance the person doesn't actually binge at all. They'll binge, sorry they don't purge at all. They binge and then burn off the calories using, using exercise as their mechanism to express it. Express this, this activity. Now the other um, type of bulimic we see is bulimic who binges and then uses diuretics to, to get rid of, to flush their system out very, very rapidly. And obviously terribly uh, dangerous behavior. And there's many levels at which that becomes a problem because you get uh, this assumption that the solution comes out of a pill bottle. And that's not an association we wish to make. So lots of problems there. So anxiety often is the underlying issue. The expression, the, me the mechanism of expression, is the binging purging activity. And within this, we see something else which is quite interesting, and that is there is a general lack of moderation in the individual. Some people could say that bulimia is actually an issue of moderation control. Now, one can look at the brain uh, physiology and talk about the prefrontal cortex until the cows come home. How do we work with that? Well, actually, it's very interesting because when you look at a bulimic's general activity, such as how do they use their credit card? What do, they, what do they like at work? Well, they always take on more work than they actually should. They take on other people's responsibilities. They overspend on their credit card. There's a lack of moderation there. Now, in some work environments, this is great. If you work in an advertising agency which goes hell for leather for about three or four weeks and then the campaign's over and they sit and do nothing for a week. And then they look, where's the next campaign? Okay, let's do this. And then in that instance, the bulimic actually thrives because it's, it's paced at a level where they can catch their breath. But for instance, working in a bank or a large insurance company, they'll take on other people's, other people's responsibilities and they'll get so busy, eventually they're going to break under the strain because the, the, the conveyor belt never stops. Right? Different types of bulimia and different types of bulimic. And as I say, it's often a case of moderation control it's really all about moderation and this is an expression of the underlying issue of anxiety. So in the material which you can buy online from THA there's a bulimia training module which teaches you exactly how to work with bulimic clients and there's um, a continuation of this video in there and you can get that on this website and hopefully that's going to be of use to you working with your bulimic clients. Leave a message in the comments section down here and let us know um, how you get along with some of your bulimic clients if you're doing our module. And if not, if you've got any questions, just ask them and I'll be more than happy to answer them. So again, my name is Rob Hadley at the Technical Hypnotherapy Association here in Vancouver.